Hey, hey, it's Daily Stoic Time. We are back. Back again. <clears throat> Did you figure out what greed and ambition were from yesterday? Okay. Good stuff. March 24th. There is philosophy in everything. Hmm. Coolio. Well, I mean, I guess that's like why we're sitting here, right? <laughs> we can literally find philosophy in everything. That's great. Epictetus. Eat like a human being. Drink like a human being. Dress up. Marry. Have children. Get politically active. Suffer abuse, bear with a headstrong brother, father, son, neighbor, or companion. Show us these things so we can see that you truly have learned from the philosophers. Mm. That's beautiful. That's so cool. I think that's my favorite part of the Stoic philosophy is that these, um, these are people in society. And Epictetus was one of the first thinkers on Stoic philosophy, and he was a slave. And Marcus Aurelius then, I forget what the difference mm. is, is like hundreds of years, if not a, a thousand years difference. Marcus Aurelius is then emperor of Rome. So you get these, and these are two major thinkers in the system. So you get somebody who has that slave background, and then you have somebody who has the, the highest power in the entire world. Like at this mm -hmm. point, like this is like the Roman Empire, like mm -hmm. king of the world. And um, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to this philosophy is you really get a sense of like the hardship for life, but then also like the responsibility for life with Marcus's quotes. Like he mm -hmm. has all this responsibility and power mm -hmm. and... I like that it's not about going out, you know, to a mountain and living the rest of your life in some sort of ashram yeah. or like pulling yourself out of the world in order to live a, a rich, meaningful life, you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's very difficult to figure out either way. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Not that like sitting yeah. in an ashram, you're like, oh, I get it all. No, it's yeah, like, yeah. no, like there's other stuff. I got to chop wood, carry but water. <laughs> I, I, I definitely, uh, um, I'm like magnetized towards these guys because they were kind <coughs> of, not only they were like, okay, first, uh, whatever, uh, but they were living by it uh, and they were also, they realized their, uh, their importance or something. Sorry, I have to cough because I just, that water went down the wrong pipe. Okay. <coughs> okay. Do you need to... Pardon me. <laughs> We're not going to edit this out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Okay. Um... They were living by this. These guys were living by this. They were living by it. Um, and they, they, like, he was an emperor of Rome, right? So, like, the Roman Empire, Empire, right? So he goes, like, I know what the responsibility I have. And he's aware of that responsibility. And now he needs to figure out how to pass that responsibility, for, pass it, you know, move it forward. In the way that, not necessarily so it stays the way he wants, but it's so it continues to like uh, function for all these people because it's functioning for, yeah, there's crime and there's war and there's bad things in here and there, but it's, it's working, right? So let's, let's not have famine or whatever right. stuff, right? Like, hey, it's working. So how do, this is a huge responsibility, right? Like no one... In today's society, maybe like, okay, even even presidents, in theory, don't have those kind of responsibilities anymore. No, right? like yeah, it's more nobody of a group, alive today. It's more of a yeah. group effort these days, right? But before then, like, th this was on an individual, like, okay, I have to, like, kind of not be greedy, right? <laughs> because otherwise, I want, I want my legacy to continue. So I'm going to put these people in charge in a way that... Um, my legacy is going to continue. He's like, no, no, no. Hey, make sure that you have this knowledge of this stoicism or something so you don't F this up 
right? But there you go. And the way you run it, the way you run it, I'm, see ya, right? I'm out, <laughs> kind of a thing. So passing it to, passing it to the next person and then that giant responsibility and accountability, that's, yeah, that like only these guys were kind of doing that, right? Like these kings or czars or, you know, empires. But he, he, he wasn't like spreading stoicism around. This was just like something he learned. I know, from. but the, but the people he, the people he uh, was passing on to, uh, because who took it over after him? Wasn't his he son, wasn't I he think. grooming somebody like his son or somebody? No, right? somebody was grooming him. The son. Somebody was grooming Marcus. Marcus, but Marcus's that... son, I think, then came in and is somebody who knows. You can also research this. I hate putting things that I'm not 100 percent sure on the you internet. Yeah. But it, like, I I believe <clears throat> that it was his son. And his son was actually not a good ruler because Marcus was so busy ruling and like being inside of the stoic kind of leadership that he kind of neglected his yeah, yeah, yeah. his son in some you, way. And so it actually, it was like three um, emperors in a row that were sort of like these philosopher kings, Marcus being the last one. Mm-hmm. And all three of them had sort of like a stoic, I believe all three of them had a stoic uh, sort of education. Mm-hmm. And it served them really well. Mm-hmm. And Marcus's meditations is all about him just like being in battle. And like he's first he's over here mm-hmm. and then he's over here. And mm-hmm. he just him kind of coaching himself through because these were like his diaries essentially. Mm-hmm. And so they weren't for the purpose of public consumption. He didn't publish them. And they were just like he just lived by it. Yeah, yeah, it was more so like he's like, this is a really challenging situation. What am I supposed to do? And then he would write to himself, mm-hmm. kind of like these little, and a, a lot of those are actually what's in here. Mm-hmm. Um, although the ones from Epictetus that are in here are from something called discourses, which I I but don't, we don't know. do. That's another thing we don't also know that if he was writing it for himself or if he was writing it with the with the idea of releasing some of this out to the world as a as a legacy type of a thing right yeah we don't know although um he He, didn't release them during when he was alive so yeah we don't know what his intentions were but yeah yeah. is is it like a dower right like is it like you know like that that was um um that was like written for that purpose Right. Someone said, hey, please, r- before you leave the town, come back and write this, right? And so the guy wrote, or whoever wrote it, and then that became the, the book of Tao. Yeah. Oh, um, I see. I don't know, like these, the, his notebooks, like meditation is made up of like mm-hmm. nine different notebooks that were written over, I think it's nine, mm-hmm. uh, but not 100%. Um, and they were written at different times and different places and such. So it seems to me like it was just sort of like a collection of material that was somehow found, somehow found or something or like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But in his mind, like, am I, I'm like, hmm, like, why am I writing this? Is this for me later? I'm going to read this or is it like, oh, no, I'm going to write this because this is smart and maybe I'll leave it to my kids or, you know, like a, yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? The, like, what, what, what yeah. I've heard is that he, it was just for himself. Right, like a like a like a journal writing type of exercise because we we'll get all that stuff out. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, that was a great one. I mean, it's like like there's nothing to say about uh, the quote yeah, except it's a beautiful quote. Except just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like go be a human being. Yeah. And and all the things that human beings do. Yeah. Okay, here's uh, Ryan's uh, commentary. Plutarch, a Roman biographer as well as an, an admirer of the Stoics, didn't begin his study of the greats of Roman literature until late in life. But as he recounts in his biography of Demosthenes, he was surprised at how quickly it all came to him. He wrote, It wasn't so much that the words brought me into a full understanding of events, as that somehow I had a personal experience of the events that allowed me to follow closely the meaning of the words. This is what Epictetus means about the study of philosophy. 
Study, yes, but go live your life as well. It's the only way that you'll actually understand what any of it means. And more important, it's only from your actions and choices over time that it will be possible to see whether you took any of the teachings to heart. Mm. Be aware of that today when you're going to work, going on a date, Mm. deciding whom to vote for, calling your parents in the evening, waving to your neighbor as you walk to your door, tipping the delivery man, saying goodnight to someone you love. All of that is philosophy. All of it is experience that brings meaning to the words. Yeah, keep keep trying it essentially, right? Yeah. Go live like, your life, you're doing fine, is what I'm taking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we are doing fine. Yeah. We are doing fine. It's di- this is what life is. Life is the living it is the life, right? Yeah. And therefore we're we're living it, therefore we're fine. <laughs> How we're living it, eh, that's an opinion. That's others' opinion or your opinion or somebody's opinion, but you're we're doing it, dude. Yeah. I know, look. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> well, and then he's like, you know, you can look back over a long period of time, you could look back to see if you are doing things right or wrong which is just by your own standards you know and it's like is life trending generally given all the things i can't control i can't control whether i get injured whether i get sick whether i get fired from my job whether my kids like me whether my spouse likes me like i can't control any of that given all of that am i showing up in a way where life is still trending in the right direction it's better than it would have been if I just yeah. was like, what about everything? Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling good about this one. Yeah, like I, there's something about those, um, like what you can control, like that's, that's more, that's more of life. I understand that the things that you cannot control are in our lives, Mm -hmm. but like the living, Mm -hmm. they're like, "Mm," the the living of it is more in the things that we can control. Mm. It's like the things that you can control are like closer to you somehow or like bigger. It's like more of who you actually are versus the things that you can't control that seem like really like ideas or like thoughts or like far away or like they're events like there's something yeah. external or outside sure, or something sure, sure. like that and like though they can be scary because they can be really tragic you know yeah, like yeah. um and and sudden and, and 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 feel very close very like right like they're they're in there yeah uh, but but the control of it is not in there yeah but the things that you have control over feels even closer than even a a, a bad tragedy or something like that and the things that we can control we can actually control all of those situations that currently we think we cannot control because we can control the way we look at it yeah therefore we say oh something tragic happened well is it really tragic or is that that is me calling it tragic is a point of view on it, right? So if we can shift that, oh, what can I find in that tragedy that is a positive, a good thing? Is there anything in there? Anything at all? It's hard sometimes, right? Like if you have like a school shooting, like what's good in it, right? Like, like that's a very difficult thing to find. I don't know what's good in it. I can't answer that. But, but I'm just saying... Um, um, shifting the perspective on what could be good in it can help us from um, seeing it the way we're seeing it today. Yeah, I agree. Good one. Anything else? Awesome. Let's high five again. Let's wrap it up. Cool beats. Bye, guys. All right. See you here tomorrow.